Hey everyone, welcome again to this new review episode for the STM32 tutorial. In the previous video, we have been looking on the binary operation and understand how useful it is. Today we are going to focus on the hexadecimal number. And first of all, we need to understand why in the heck we need the hexadecimal number. We already have the decimal, the binary. Why do we need a third one? After that, we will have a practical application to see how practical they can be within our embedded application. Finally, we need to make a mask using hexadecimal number. They are very useful there. So we are going to use uh, the border black pill and our MCU is the STM32F411. And just to get a, a quick view on why we need these hexadecimal numbers, if you tape a little bit of Google, you will see that's a, um, a system of number that uses 16 unique digit or digit and alphanumeric characters. And also it is used to have like a, a larger number to a fewer one. One of the best application, but in a fictional way that has been describing how hexadecimal number can be useful is this wonderful scene from the Martian with Matt Damon trying to find an easy way to communicate with NASA using really a uh, limited numbers of characters. So here's the rub. Somehow we have to have complex astrophysical engineering conversations using nothing but a still frame camera from 1996. Luckily, the camera does spin. So I can make an alphabet. It can't be our alphabet. 26 characters plus a question card into 360 gives us 13 degrees of arc. That's way too narrow. I'd never know what the camera was pointing at. Hexadecimals. And believe me, if you know the, the value of the number in, in decimal, you don't need to know it in hexadecimal. That's not at all the meaning of using the hexadecimal numbers. So actually, you see this in this table that you will need from binary perspective, and if we work as on the red array, you'll need four binary numbers to represent one digit of the um, hexadecimal number. And as a conclusion, and we will see it later on in details, first of all, five, bar, five binary digit equivalent to one hexadecimal digit. This has give us two quick wins, which the first one, it's a shorter syntax. So we, we can reduce the production time. Imagine yourself, you do have a 64 bit number. So you will need to, to type 64 bits. However, if you do, to, if you have to write it in uh, just in hexadecimal, you will need only 16. Still 16, a big number, but not 64. And also less mistakes. Imagine you will have to modify a number between zero and ones and trying to find the right position. That's a hell, even for a very very advanced programmers. Okay, so those are really the big advantages that we do have. And now that we understand this, and that's really basically the meaning of uh, having hexadecimal numbers. Let's jump to our program, the same program that is controlling right now our uh, microcontroller and the LEDs. And let's go into the debug mode to see what are the values and what are the, the nice things that we do have. So let's go to the debug mode. Okay. And let's make it a little bit smaller here so we can get more space for the writing and make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so our microcontroller now is halted because we didn't start our debug mode. And let's also add the table just for you guys. If I go too fast, you may see it quickly. So first of all, to declare um, a, a hexadecimal number, you just in the system to, for the compiler to understand it, you just zero X and then the compiler will understand you are talking hexadecimal. And after that, I'm declaring two number the two numbers. One is an int, both are ints actually. But one is written in hexadecimal, in binary, the first one, this one, and the second one is declared as a hexadecimal number. And you can see this is a by like an int, which is a 32 bit. And it's actually 32 ones together. This is the maximum number in um, the STM32 
a four for the int, where we can write it only in hexadecimal, so it's only eight digits. So it reduces a lot um, the the like the the complexity of the number and give you just an idea how to use it. And same as previously, same as previously, we don't need we are not converting to understand the value of the number, but understand what is the uh, value of a certain uh, digit in the memory. That's the most important value that we need from this kind of a binary and also hexadecimal. So let's go back a little. And in the previous um, code, we have uh, said that my byte, like a consecutive ones that we have used, but this time we have a 0xff. So if I run my code here and run and execute this, this one, we will see that all the LEDs are turned on, and this is exactly what I need. So after that, what I'm doing, so in the previous code, we had the 01010101, and instead of writing this one, like as you can see, it's it's repeating itself. There's a four digit 0101, so it's the same hexadecimal number, and it's A, so it becomes zero hexadecimal AA, and if I run it, you can see that we have 1010 that described by our uh, LEDs. And after that, let's change a little bit and have a more complicated value. So here we do have the 0100 and then 0010. So the 0100 is a 2, where the 0010 um, is a 4. And try to use, like, the more you do it, the, the more you get used to them if if you're really not familiar. But always, if you have the one here, it's a one. If the one is here, two, four, and eight. Like combining them, them help you a lot. So it just sometimes it become really straightforward and easy to understand. So let's run it here, and we should see at the extremities, like the one before the extremities, LEDs are turned on. Good. Now the next one. So we do have. Um, the 0, 0, and then 1, 1, and this is C, and after that, 1, 1, 0, 0. So if we run this one, and we do have an OR character here, we should see all this LED between, now the shining LED, um, between them turning on. So let's see it. And we do have them. Only the LED at the extremities are off. Okay, good. So now what we are going to do is also a different thing, and that's really funny. So you see this one, 00111100, and if we would like to do the opposite, it's exactly the opposite number. So it's a, a 3C. So sometimes just by doing these games again and again, some combination become very obvious. So let's run this one as an end, and what we should see, only the second um, LED from each side will, will be uh, turn it on. Okay, so let's turn off our um, our I'll say our LEDs, and we start a little bit working on the shifting. And here, this is a very important. Sometimes people get confused. Let's say right now we we put it as my byte is zero C. So here it's not the zero C is not a zero like this, but it's zero zero one one just as a correction. Okay, so if I apply just my bit like this, my byte, so you can see that we do have 1100, zero, zero, which is C. On the other hand, if we would like to shift only by one um, by one bit, if we do shift by one, like by one, like this, it will shift only one bit. It will not shift by a hexadecimal. Just careful because sometimes it some confusion happen. And people think that if I put one for the hexadecimal, it will be shifting during the next hexadecimal number, but it's still, it's a binary operation. So, and if you would like to fully shift it to, sorry, jumped, completely jumped uh, this 4-1, so I don't know why, jumped 4-1, but if you want to go here, you have to add four. So just let's check what's happening. Yeah, it didn't work, uh, it worked well. So three, and again, if I run it again, you can see now it's still, we're still waiting for the fourth one. So if you'd like to jump into the fourth, you go here, 
and you can see that by adding four on this one, you, you shifted the whole hexadecimal number. So if you would like to move only one hexadecimal number, always multiply the position by four, okay? Now we are going to the most important thing and building the mask. And here on this one, we are going to take one example. So imagine you do have, um, this is, please do not care about the details, but sometimes you do have a 32, a 32 um, bit a register that you have to modify. And you can see the, the reset value even from the constructor here is expressed in hexadecimal number. And uh, you need to really modify this one and you have all this type of selection. You have so many different type of selection and you would like to modify only this one. So to do so, and you do have this 32 bit uh, value, let's go here. Let's say that my register value is this kind of a super gibberish value here. And let's start watching this value. So if you would like to see the value here, we can go and add my register value to watch one. Okay, so now it's zero, zero. So let's jump to the next one. Okay, so it will not be giving the value only after a certain time. This is the compiler optimization. So let's jump a little by little. And what happened, what we won't like to do, so it's the position 24 that we would like to change. So let's go back quickly to this. So from position 24, I would like to modify this four um, bits, okay? And we would like to apply, for example, the C value or the 1100. I would like that this position here, 24, become equal to C. So what we need to do, so this is, this is my desired bit config, and this is from here where I would like to modify my code. The wrong way of doing it. So it, it may look correct, but what happened here, so if we put 0C, which is the 01100, um, and we moved by 24, and we just put this OR, that, that should be working. However, as we have already, and let me identify it. So we do have the first four, the final four uh, bits. And then we do have already, this is the position that we would like to focus on and change. So if we do only this, if we do only the OR, what will happen is that OR will just um, be adding the ones here. And that's a big mistake. So you will have or not the desired result. So if we go again, jump a little bit and see the value, you can see here, I hope it's um, big enough so you can see it. Here, instead of having the C that I wanted, I do have an F. So let's see the right way of doing it. So I'm reinitializing my register value with all this one and zero. And first of all, I need to clean it. And to clean that position, so what I'm trying to do is, first of all, adding all this one, putting them to zero. And to put them all to zero, what I would like to do, I take my position and I push it, I push an hexadecimal F to that position, but I push the complement of that F. By pushing the complement of that F and putting an end, what will happen is, all that F will become a zero. And let me run quickly here. And so this is like jumping um, already like computed. Unfortunately, the compiler do not, do not allow me to see the value. And, but the result here into my register value now is C, which the one I wanted. So my desired bit value is C. So when you have multiple bits to transform, First of all, always um, raise or uh, reset them to zero using this kind of method. And after that, you will have to make this one to apply your hexadecimal desired value so you can have it here. So now you can see how much the hexadecimal numbers can be useful to, to avoid mistakes and to make your code a little bit more performant. That was all for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode 
and see you for the next one. Have a good day. Bye-bye.